Let's learn in this video how to set up a private environment for AKS Azure Kubernetes Service and ACR Azure Container Registry. Organizations deploying their applications into these environments wants to add security, so they will make these resources private. This means they will not be accessible through a public FQDN. The only access could be achieved through a machine that is deployed inside the same virtual network, a peered network, a VPN, or an express route. In this video, I'll show you how we can connect to these environments, both AKS and ACR, through an Azure virtual machine. So we'll be leveraging the Azure private endpoint, which is a private link service, and also the Azure private DNS zone. So let's see how that works. In a previous video, when we have created the AKS, we have attached an ACR Azure container registry into that AKS. And by default, that ACR is public. If I go here to networking, we can see that public configuration. Because here it says public network access is set to all networks. Here we want to disable that public FQDN and make it accessible only through private endpoint through using private access. Private endpoint will create a private IP address and a subnet or VNet. The Doc documentation about private endpoint will be available on this link right here. I'll keep the link on the documentation and the steps that I'm going to perform today are well documented on this official Microsoft documentation about private ACR. So private endpoint will disable NSGs on its host subnet. We don't want this to happen to AKS subnet, so we can create another subnet in the AKS VNet dedicated to private endpoints. So here where we, if I go to the AKS VNet, I can see that default subnet that will be created to host my uh, my uh, nodes and my pods, if I choose Azure Sienna for AKS. And now I go to create another subnet dedicated for the private endpoints. I call it subnet PE. PE stands for private endpoint. And then I will choose an IP range that doesn't um, overlay with the my subnet. Let's choose this one, for example. Then I go to click Save. Note that here we are creating a dedicated subnet for those private endpoints, but it's also possible to create a dedicated virtual network for these private endpoints in case or in scenarios where we use a hub and spoke model. We can have a spoke for uh, private endpoints, period only with the spokes that needs access to the private endpoints resources. Great, so now we have that uh, subnet for private endpoints. Now let's go back to our ACR. Then let's go to the networking section. And from here, we get already this remark, this note telling us upgrade to premium SQ to enable firewalls, private endpoints, and dedicated data endpoints. So private endpoints could be only used with premium SQ, at least for today. So let's go to upgrade our ACR to use that premium SQ. For that, I'll go back to the overview. And then from here, I'll go to update. I'll go to select that SQ, the premium one. And then I go to save these settings and that will be immediately upgraded to premium. Now I'll go back to networking and here we should see even more options with the premium plan. Let's set the public network access to disable it to disable public access to the ACR through the internet. So choose disable it. And here I make sure to allow trusted Microsoft services to access this container registry if I want that. So now using this private endpoint, we'll allow only resources from our network to access the ACR. So let's go next to select a private access and create a private endpoint connection. Private access, then let's go to create a new private endpoint connection. And here we have five steps to follow. So let's start with the basics. So for the basics, we choose here the resource group and then the name of this private endpoint. So for the resource group, um, it's up to you to choose. Actually, it doesn't really matter. But here I'll choose the same resource group for my nodes, AKS nodes uh, resource group, which is this one right here that starts with MC. And then I call it PE for private endpoints, PE ACR. I'll keep the region West Europe because I host all my resources there. And then I'll go next to resources where here we choose the resource. So this is a registry. So it have only one sub resource that is registry. So nothing to change there. Next, we go to virtual network. Then here I will choose my AKS virtual network. And then I will choose the subnet PE for private endpoints. 
And then from here, I have the options to statically allocate IPs or dynamically allocate IPs. For simplicity, I'll choose here dynamically allocate IP address. And then here for the this configuration, I set integrate with private DNS zone. I'll enable that and that will create or will configure that uh, DNS zone for me. So that will create a configuration for private link. So I want to host that into my resource group for the MCRG private AKS for the node resource group. So that means that DNS zone, private DNS zone will be created inside this resource group. Next, tags, nothing to change there. Review and create. Once validation passage from here, we can go to create that private endpoint. Let's give this a few seconds. And once the resources are created, we can go here to the nodes, AKS nodes resource group to view the created resources. And from here, we can see those newly created resources that will be the private endpoint for ACR and then its network interface that is attached to that private endpoint. And then the third resource is the private DNS zone for the private ACR. So note that here we have a private endpoint for AKS and another one private endpoint for ACR and DNS zone, private DNS zone for ACR and another private DNS zone for uh, the AKS cluster. Let's check the private endpoint configuration. So it's attached to that network interface. And if we go to the DNS configuration, then we can see here it's also attached to uh, the uh, private DNS zone. Now let's go to the private DNS zone for ACR. And from the overview, we can see the A records that were created for with the private IP addresses for ACR. So those are the private IPs used to access to ACR. Note here that we have two private IPs. One is for reaching ACR and the second one for reaching the data or the uh, containers that will be saved in a storage account, not exactly in ACR. So that's the second, the second one. If we go now to virtual network links, then we should see here a link created for AKS VNet. So this means my cluster can connect to the ACR. Coming back to overview, if I click here on the uh, first A record, we should see the private link or the private FQDN for to access my ACR. And it have here private link .io. The third resource created is the network interface, which uh, is in read-only mode and it follows the same lifecycle as the private uh, endpoint. At this stage, if I go to the virtual machine that I've created in the previous video, and from there I try to connect to my Azure subscription, try to connect then to the ACR, then here I will get a problem saying I cannot connect. So let's fix that. In this second step, we'll go to set up a connection between the virtual machine and the Azure Container Registry. Our objective now is to connect to the private ACR from the virtual machine and push an image. We will use a DevBox or JumpBox virtual machine to push the image. If this VM is in the same AKS VNet, it will be able to connect directly to ACR. But in this demo, we will use a VM hosted in its own virtual network. In real life, this is the case for architectures when where a jump box or a dev box build or a DevOps build agent in one uh, virtual network are used to deploy to resources in other virtual networks. For the dev box VM to connect to the private ACR through the private endpoint sitting in another VNet, we need to do the two steps. First is to go to create a VNet peering between virtual machine VNet and ACR private endpoint VNet. And second step is to add a link to the Jumpbox virtual machines VNet in the ACR private DNS zone. Let's go to one of the two VNets and create a VNet peering between VM and ACR. I'll go to the VM's VNet, for example. And from that VNet, I'll go to select peerings and go to add a new peering. Note that here we have that old peering that we created in the first video between ACR and the virtual machine. Or actually between the AKS VNet and the virtual machine uh, VNet. Uh, the AKS VNet here is the same uh, VNet used by the private endpoint of ACR. So here that step is done for us because we have that peering already established between the two virtual networks. Great, so let's go to the second step.
In the second step, we want to allow the virtual machine to be able to resolve the ACR private uh, FQDN. And so we can do that by going to the private DNS zone of ACR and then we add a link to the virtual machine virtual network. So I'll go to virtual network links. And note here we have already that link for the AKS virtual network. Now we'll go to add another link for the VM virtual network. So we'll give that link a name. Let's give it a name, then we choose the virtual network. In my case, that should be the VM virtual network. Then click OK to create that link. And once that link is created, it means any device from these two virtual networks, from the AKS and the VM virtual networks, can connect or can uh, reach out to the private ACR through the private endpoint. So now we are ready to connect to the virtual network to the, uh, from the virtual machine to the private ACR. So I switch back to my Azure virtual machine where I am already logged into Azure subscription. I have created a variable for the, my ACR name. And then I go to use the Azure command line to try to log into my ACR. And yeah, good. Now it tells me the login was done successfully. Then I'll go here to try to use the command ACR import to import a, a Docker container from MCR. Microsoft Container Registry into my Azure Container Registry. And I'll call that image nginx 121.4. Alternatively, we can go to pull an image from MCR. Then we can go to tag that image, give it a new tag with my own registry. And then we can go to push that image into ACR. So I'll call that image Hello World. Once it's pushed, now I can go to my ACR, to my private ACR, and here from repositories, I'll be able to see all the containers pushed into this ACR. And here, of course, there is me unable to send requests for fetching repositories because this is a private ACR. I cannot see uh, the resources here. So the Azure portal cannot access that ACR. Uh, so what I still can use here is the Azure command line. So for that, I'll use az ACR or repository list dash n the name of my ACR. And then yeah, I get the two images that I have pushed into my ACR. Great, so now my Azure virtual machine can connect to ACR and it also can connect to the I private AKS cluster. So let's set up now the connection between AKS and the private ACR. That's gonna be the se third step in this demo. So to enable the connection between the private AKS and the private ACR, AKS should have access to ACR private endpoint. This is already done because ACR's private endpoint is in the same AKS uh, virtual network. Second thing is to add the link to AKS BNet in the ACR private DNS zone. So let's do this second step. For AKS to connect to private ACR, just add the link to the private uh, DNS zone. So going back to the ACR private DNS zone, I'll go to add a new virtual network link. And yeah, we note here that we have already done that. So that private DNS zone can resolve all machines coming from both AKS VNet or the virtual machine VNet. So let's now go to validate the uh, private AKS connects successfully to the private ACR. So what I'm gonna do here is that I'll go to try to deploy that Nginx pod that I have pushed into my ACR earlier. I'll try to deploy it into the AKS cluster so that AKS will try to pull that container from ACR and that will validate if my AKS can connect or not. Oops, here it tells me that pod Nginx already exists because I have deployed it in the first video. So I'll go to just rename this uh, Nginx pod. Let's call it Nginx2 and here tells me it's created. So let's make sure it's really created by running the command get pods and add watch. And yeah, here it is. We can see our second pod was pulled from the private ACR. So that validates that our AKS can connect to that private ACR. Great. So to conclude, now we have we had early learned in this tutorial how to provision a secure AKS environment using private endpoint. The only unload connections will be through Bastion using the DevBox virtual machine. AKS and ACR both are private and accessible only from the private virtual network using private endpoints. Typically with AKS, we would also use storage account, key vault, Azure SQL, but we can make these resources private and accessible only through the private endpoint. So even if they are not covered in this demo, the concepts still the same.
I hope this video was useful. Thank you.